Hey everybody, welcome back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal Sloby from coming live from a hotel in Austin. So sorry for the audio. With me, of course, my good friend Aaron Ronan. Hello. My good friend Turbo C. Howdy. My good friend Polahoko. Hello. There it yes. is. I was wondering who'd be the first. My good friend Jim. Hey, buddy. <laughs> my good friend Devious Vacuum. Ah, uh, a fresh, fresh pack of of the the intellectual drink for the chosen ones. Mm. Doctor P. For the finale, or are we just gonna like? I'm gonna open like twelve at, at the same time. Just <laughs> shotgun. For the finale, we should open wine bottles. <laughs> yeah, like champagne, champagne and just yeah. spray it on. Pop it. Spray it on our computers. You know. <laughs> Oh, oh, I just blew the shit out of my audio on that one. It would have been funny. All right, all right but um, <laughs> okay, let's just adjust that. So when we last left our heroes, uh, we got the Ferris ending, and uh, when we resume this time, we resume at the point where we made the decision not to send the D-mail last time. So this time we did send the D-mail, which undid Ferris's wish, which meant that her dad died, and also uh, Akihabara is Moe again. And she's like right in front of Okabe, and uh, she's smiling, which is completely the opposite of how almost everyone is feeling in this circumstance. Well, no, but the anime's back. So it evens out. Yeah, that. I mean, that's why <laughs> that's why she's smiling. Yeah, exactly. It's like my dad died, but... Yeah, that's so much more important. Marty, we gotta bring the anime back. <laughs> But Goku can be my dad now. She doesn't remember. It's so sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. She doesn't remember. Yeah, they were they were wondering if uh, she was going to remember because she did remember some things, but it appears she forgot everything. But Rintaro remembers. Yeah. 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 And he's so sad. Poor Rintaro. And he just hugs her and says that he's sorry. <laughs> yeah, and she like doesn't know how to take it. Like, she's... Do- doing like the Chunibio thing and Rintaro's just like apologizing and she's like I- I- here's the part where you say something about the seventh seal or the twelve dragons or something and she also says something like uh, uh, maybe she's in the next room uh, you know do- this is you know inappropriate or whatever and uh, and it seems that all the girls here assume that Rintaro's just gonna end up with Mayori mm. yeah which I just, you know, I can understand given the circumstances, but it's just, it's made more obvious that every time this, something like this comes up, someone immediately refers to it. Well, just because they've been together for such a long time. Yeah. But also every girl has a crush on him. Every girl. Well, yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. single every, one. Just, just all of them. I don't know. I don't think Suza did. Who can, it's, it's the time stank on him. Who can resist it? Well, I can't. Anyway, so... <laughs> oh, was that, was that a, a natural question? <laughs> no, it, I was just expecting some reaction other than stunned silence. I'm, I didn't know <laughs> time, st- time stank was such a divisive thing. Well, we hadn't really thought about it up until that point. We had to process it. Oh, it was ponderous yeah. silence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those grenade comments, man. We gotta, like, you know, it's like three to five seconds to absorb. Didn't realize you were gonna get all philosophical right at the start. That's the word I would have used. Speaking of... Dis- Divisive. <laughs> okay. We're doing Luca today. We sure are. Well, bad choice of words, but <laughs> let's get back to time stank. <laughs> so Rintaro, then he's like, okay, we, well, we gotta, we gotta go to the next one, the next one in line. You know, we got Luca, and then, uh, and then Moeka. He um, he asks, he tries to figure out where the IBN uh, fifty one hundred is. Um, cause, you know, he's like, oh, okay, now that the, all this stuff's back, maybe, maybe it's here, but, you know, we all know metagaming, metastorying, that it's not. Yeah, but it was at the shrine this time. It did get, it, it, get, it got to the shrine and then disappeared. Luca acts extremely guilty when asked about it, and she says, no, I don't know what that is or what you're referring to. Yeah. What's a computer? <laughs> so, Luca, I feel like I, this is, in this this like session we see luca like lying a lot or like being too kind like like being like too like not wanting to say how she really feels or like being afraid of not being like 
demure and and she lies a lot more than I thought for her character. So this was like a new thing. It's shyness in a different way than we're used to. Mm-hmm. I think she just really wants to avoid conflict, like at all costs. Yeah. So. But it's it's frustrating in this for sure, and it uh, leads to a lot of like um ah uh, 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 a lot of nothing's <laughs> being said, like literally yeah. clicking through a lot of nothing. They really kind of mm. cranked it up to eleven in that regard for this chapter. So Rintaro, bless his heart, feels the need to explain the situation to Luca before reversing the text. Mm. He does it in the worst possible way. Twice. <laughs> and, like, now is the time where he feels he needs to be completely honest? Like, now? Like, not before? <laughs> uh. he, was just, he was just like, hey, remember that time when I, I, I sort of groped you? Mm. And just... This is just, yeah... And he, he starts out by saying, you're actually a boy. Yeah. And, and this is getting ahead of ourselves, but he has to redo it later and does it the same way again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty great. And also, it's basically like him saying, hey, remember that time I groped you? Well, here's why I was right. It's, he just, he just can't <laughs> fucking do it. He's the worst. He's the worst. He's definitely speaking as someone who's like, well, this isn't my timeline, so I can just say... Everything from my perspective. But at the same time, if he was really disconnected, then he wouldn't tell her at all. He would just... Mm-hmm. Do, he, but, oh, well, but he needs... Does he do it in the first time before he talks to Carissa? Or after? Um, I think he, he loses his nerve, and then he decides to... then And then he, um... And then we get to the thing where it's like, oh, well, maybe she, maybe Mayuri won't die. So I don't have to, I don't have to bring this up with Luca and everything will be fine. (laughs) Yeah. So in essence, when he first starts off, he's just like, he goes to the shrine. He talks to her dad. The dad's like, yeah, it's gone. I don't know. Um, The only person who cleaned that area was Luca. So, uh, hey, do you remember seeing it? And then like, there's no other option but to be like, oh, yeah, clearly she's involved in some way where it disappeared. And even though he's so frustrated and, like, needs to do this, like, he's so... He's also just, like, so... He cannot upset Luca. He doesn't want to upset her. And all he ever does is upset her. I don't think a human being can speak to Luca without upsetting her in some way. (laughs) Which is also, like, another sort of turn for Okabe when he, uh... Because, like, he is constantly upsetting any other girl. Yeah. (laughs) And being completely oblivious to it. But now he's starting to pick up. But not enough to, like, be good at it. Not to do anything about it. No, God, no. This, this girl makes it very obvious that she's upset. <laughs> so, I uh, just to go ahead and say, like, so you get to a point where he's like, well, maybe I can hold off, and, and maybe she won't die, and if you don't, if you don't leap, you have the option to not time leap, and then you get another scene where she dies, and then you time leap. <laughs> yeah, it just loops right back to the same thing. You're like, well, that didn't work. So, I'm really tired of this. (laughs) I'm getting real sick of this. So then we ask Kurisu for advice. And um, Kurisu says what we're all thinking, which is, don't tell her. Just do it. But Rintaro says, well, I don't remember uh, the mother's pager number to send the reverse reverse email. And um, so he's like, I've got to go tell Luca the truth. Uh, And Kurisu's like, could you also lie and get it mm. a different way. And he's like, no, I have to tell her the truth. And Crazy's like, well, don't take lying off the table just yet. I don't <laughs> know where Carisu was coming from with this, but she, I guess, because she's not really like Rintaro in that she hasn't been time traveling and doesn't get to see the results of everything. She was very in that frame of mind where, where it's like, well, as long as you do it, then whatever happens here doesn't matter. Like, you could just lie, or, hey, why not just take it by force? Who cares? This timeline wouldn't exist after that. Yeah, I was really shocked that she said that. Oh, yeah, she does say that. Yeah. And Rintaro has to be the one... Rintaro has to be the one that's like, uh, what am I leaving behind to be in that case? Yeah. She does immediately, like, take it, like, she does say, like, oh, I don't know where that came from. I forget exactly how she phrased it, but yeah, she backpedals on that. But I mean, to be totally fair, too, it is a dead timeline, so to speak. Like, this is something that it will be undone. I think they're trying to show that she's, she's thinking like a scientist and, like, just think about the results instead of the way to, you get to the results. Yeah, but it also kind of gets into the stuff that Suzuha said about her. 
which is that she didn't you know, she was always about like the results not about the the means you know that 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 that, that oh she did that, there's a reason why she doesn't like her and we haven't established why exactly that is yeah we did because she has a uh, dragon and Suzu has a tiger oh sure. yeah. oh yeah I, I forgot you're right yeah that is, that does make logical sense given the, the <laughs> multiple timelines yeah well, Suzuha never, and she never, like, explicitly met Kurisu, I think, right? Because Kurisu's just, like, she's used as a symbol right. in the yeah. future for, like, for CERN. Yeah, Kurisu is, is already dead when... Yeah. Right, but it, apparently her reputation is that she did this. You know, she, she's kind of sacrificed things given, you know, what the future could hold and the future held CERN. So, given the opportunity, like... I, I'm I'm curious what your all thoughts were. Like, would you keep it a secret and just undo the the pager message? Because, like, to me, yes. I'd be like, I kind of I feel like it would be wrong to not say something, even if they don't remember it. I'm gonna be honest. This situation is so socially awkward for me that I don't think I could do anything but just do it and not say anything. Maybe it's like a like a. I, I would take a coward's layout. Ma- Go ahead, sorry. Maybe it's like a penance sort of thing where I'd be like I even if it is awkward I, I have to do that so that yeah, I'm being a little facetious here it is like I think you can see though Rotaro is like doing the right thing here so to speak like the you know what I mean like take your lump like this is the way it has to go kind of what thing but the responsible I guess I think Rintaro three chapters ago would would lie but Rintaro now wouldn't yeah Rintaro post Ferris Good point. is not gonna lie because yeah. he's yeah. already exper- like we, we're going to touch on it later, but he's already experienced someone who remembers something from an alternate timeline. I don't know if he's ready to risk mm-hmm. that. He doesn't explicitly mention it at all in, the, in these initial stages, but I think that's probably affecting him. Like Karisu yeah. mentions that it's all going to be undone, but I don't think that they've ever really proven that. It's like a theory, so there's still that possibility for Rintaro that it just is. He doesn't know what he's leaving behind him. And it's going to be undone, but Rintaro himself is going to remember it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Which true. still makes it real in some form. Yeah. He wants to treat every person as a real human being and not, you know, he doesn't want to become so disconnected that he stops treating them as people. And that's it's it's very difficult. I It's hard with Luca also because, like, from, like, Rintaro's, what, like, 19? And Luca's, like, yeah. like 16? Um... And so, I feel like from our perspective, as, like, uh, people who are much older than that, um, it's kind of like, oh, honey, like, you're going through so much, Luca, and, like, you, like, it's gonna be okay, and, like, I think it would be maybe easier to be, like, a little bit more paternalistic, Mm -hmm. because it's, she's, like, because you wouldn't quite, you'd see her more as a kid and not as a peer, um, but from Rintaro's perspective, you know, they are pretty much... I mean, it's hard... <laughs> I don't know that Luca Luca's so easy to, to, to baby, um, because she's so shy. But, uh, that... I think there's that aspect, too, of, like, he's much more, like... No, like, you're, like, 100%, like, you have to make the decision and all that, uh, that kind of thing. He doesn't have... Because, you know, he doesn't have the... He, he also doesn't have that perspective of, like, I don't know, that it'll be okay in the end yeah. with everything that Luke is going through. And just the fact that, like, all these people are this age, and I think it's good to put that in context, because given all the other stuff that, that like, you want to put in context, like, the idea that these, everyone involved, or at least most of the people involved, are between the ages of 16 and 19, ev- it all means everything at that point. Like, cause you can't, yeah. you can't see that far ahead. Why should you see that far ahead? Like, this is all the most important thing that has ever happened because it is the most important thing, and like that's gonna factor into every decision. Like you, like that uh, that idea of like distance doesn't exist because you uh, obviously haven't experienced it. You shouldn't have to have factor that in. And if any of us had been there with Luca, we would have been like, "No, don't you? You don't need to do this. You don't need to send. You know, you, you don't. You don't need to risk something as as huge as like changing the past in order to to have. You know, in order to be assigned female at birth. You're you are a girl. You're good, Luca. You <laughs> and your gender doesn't matter. Just like uh, what uh, Rintaro said to her when they first met. 
Yeah. Which we'll get to a lot later. But um, eventually we he does confront Luca. Um, and I think just tells him the whole thing, like, that Mayuri is going to die, that he needs the IBN 5100. And the whole thing. <laughs> tells her the whole thing. The whole yeah. And she cannot deal with it as you would expect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she flat up admits that she's the one that uh, accidentally broke the um, 5100. Well, so it was it was in the in the shrine. It was uh, accidentally broken because she was cleaning someday three years isn't ago. Isn't that much later? Isn't that like towards the end of the chapter? Is it? Oh, she doesn't say that she broke it until the end, yeah. Anyway, she did break it, guys. She's acting like someone who broke it. It's yeah. very obvious. She knows. <laughs> so she gets upset, and, like, Ventaro doesn't understand, and, and, and she, like, runs away crying, and, and he returns and is like, Kreisu, what did I do wrong? And Kreisu is immediately like, Luca likes you, idiot! Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she has a crush on you! Well, who doesn't? <laughs> Which is which should have been Rentaro's action. Yeah. Everybody who explains this to Rentaro also has a crush on him, so like you can immediately see the impact of like, oh, of course she likes you, dumbass. I'm yeah. calling you dumbass because I also like you. <laughs> oh, I related to Carisi so much in this moment, um, and so Carisi's like, you should go on. You know, essentially that uh, Rentaro should go on a date with Luca in order to get the information that he needs, and. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's like, it's like fan fiction that the author wrote. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, yeah, it is. This is an extremely like yeah. That's mm-hmm. this whole chapter. Yeah, the subtext is basically like, why don't you just fuck her and get the information from her that way? <laughs> like, like, if duh. you're nice to her, a romantic, then she'll probably just give you the information, and then you'll be set. But he right, can't... and then Job's like, oh, I got the information. You he know? can't <laughs> do it. And uh, Mayuri, th- so then later in the lab, Mayuri shows up and, and she storms and she's mad because Rintaro made Luca cry. And of course, Luca and Mayuri are really good friends. And so, of course, Luca told Mayuri. Which is like a normal Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, Luca, I don't know why she's especially mad this time. I guess because it was Rintaro that made Luca cry <laughs> instead of like a dog that she saw earlier. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. So Mayuri's like, you need to go apologize to Luca. And just in that moment, Luca texts Rintaro and asks him to come over and talk to her again. And and he's like, okay, Mayuri, I'm going to go because he doesn't want to explain too much to Mayuri because it's too hard. And um, and it just, it's immediately set up like it's very clearly a confession. It's going to happen. Luca can't get uh get the words out her mouth she just low talks and Rintaro has to be like what <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> let's make this as difficult as we can for you what <laughs> literally the worst and she's like I'll do it I'll I'll let I'll tell you the information so, and I'll I'll agree to I'll consent for you to change the past back to the way it was but you have to agree to be my boyfriend if only it was that simple. Well, <laughs> it took like 18,000 tries. Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Can we space this differently? Is there a different font we could use for boyfriend? I don't know how we'll present this. But just for two days. Just for a couple days. Just for two days. And Rintaro is so distressed that he immediately time leaps to avoid the situation. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of, yeah. So he time leaps further back. I can understand his feelings, and then it's like, but for two days. I'm like, oh, he did, okay. He didn't have to travel back through time just to get away. But he did, and now he has to be the boyfriend for longer. <laughs> for three days. Yeah, he came back with Karisu, because I, I like this. I like this, um, because he wakes up in the lab, and he's just like immediately, Christina, Christina, I need your help. And he goes to Christina is like, look, I don't understand girls. Can you tell me how to talk to girls? Can you come talk with me, with Luca, about, you know, like, because you're both girls, right? And it... somehow I did the dialogue choices wrong and she wanted to be my boyfriend or girlfriend. Yeah, come, come be the buffer. 
And also, like, he, he presents it to her as, like, like an academic pursuit. Like, oh, you know the difference between male and female brains. Kurisu knows exactly what she's doing this entire scene. And I, arguably, I think she actually set him up pretty well, but he didn't understand what she was doing. That's my take. My hot take on this. Is I don't, that, I can't agree with that. Is that she set him up to come in and be like, no, Christina, you're wrong. Um, but he didn't do it. He didn't understand what she was doing. No, I think she just doesn't know how to present this conversation either. Like, when has she learned how to communicate these feelings? But she just lies to Luca. Like, she she lies. So she shows up and she starts talking about the difference between male and female brains. And a bunch of shit that Rintaro thinks to himself, like, none of this is true. Like, and he knows that it's not true. So why is she saying that? Like, Like, why is she saying all this stuff that, like, kind of, like reinforces the, almost the fact that Luca shouldn't want to to be a boy again or whatever. Like, it, where it's like, oh, well, the brains are fundamentally different and this, this, and this, and da 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 and, and they're not, and it's junk science. But what's the proper way to communicate that? And do you think that Kirisu would know how to communicate that, given her given her history? Yeah, we you gotta remember, she's a lot like uh, Rintaro. Yeah. In a different way. Yeah. But why did she? So then, why did she show up and tell and lie to Luca and tell her a bunch of junk science? I really don't know. I don't know where she was going with that. that See, to <laughs> me, it was like sabotage, right? Like it was exactly the opposite of what she should have said, um, which is that it doesn't matter. Well, it apparently worked because now the boyfriend deal is extended for two days. It got worse. Well, that's just because he jumped back two more days in the past. Yeah. I think that she was kind of... I, I think that he could have stepped in and been like, no, Christina, you're wrong, and then kind of been the hero of the situation, and that would have, like, convinced Luca. Um, but he didn't He didn't understand what she was getting at. She just made it worse. I could kind of see that, yeah. I do like the idea that she, she possibly said everything completely opposite than what she intended to say, because she, she just, uh, bros on the spot as well. But then... If, if that was the plan, then she would have known that she would have had to explain it in detail to Rintaro because he'd be too stupid to catch on. Hmm. There is that factor that she knows he's dumb. I mean, the alternative explanation is that she sabotaged him on purpose because she has a crush on him. That is also well, true. Well, that's, that, yeah. I think that's where I'm going with the end. I honestly think it's intentional sabotage. Well, it can also be subconscious sabotage, where, like, you think you're trying to do the right thing, but then you do the entire wrong thing because you know it's going to fuck up the way he communicates this to someone. I just think it's too, it's, like, because the way Rintar reacts to what she's saying is that he knows that it's blatantly false, so therefore she knows that it's blatantly false, um, and and it's, it's counterproductive to what they're trying to do. Like, I think they're they're both fully aware that what she's saying is counterproductive to what they're trying to do. Whether it's because she's trying to help Rintaro by making him, be, like, be good cop, bad cop, or whether she's just trying to sabotage the situation because she's mad. <laughs> That's ambiguous. Um, but he, he, anyway, he fucks it up and uh, keeps trying to avoid the situation and, like, avoid having to be Luca's boyfriend for three days. And finally, he's, like, stressing out about it so much and is like, just give up. Just do it. Idiot. Just do it. Just be your boyfriend for three days. Is that really that bad? Is that a big deal? You get to go on a date. You get, like, fuck, go bowling. Like, dates are fun. It's just such like a. It. <laughs> it's such like an immediate like uh like there's such like an immediate jump to sexuality in this of like. Um, of like, oh, da- oh, being her boyfriend means we have sex. Like as <laughs> if in three days that's what's going to happen. It's like such a teen thought. Like, oh, dating automatically means we're, we have to have sex. <laughs> yeah, and being and having sex means we have to have sex forever. I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> One constant stream of intercourse for the rest of our <laughs> days. No respite, just water breaks. Yeah. <laughs> And um, Rintaro finally actually fucking ref- reflects on his thoughts. And he, what he really feels is uh, that he's nervous that he'll develop feelings for Luca in this timeline that'll carry over into in his heart into the other timeline. And then it'll be even weirder. 
uh, because then he'll have a crush on Luca and, like, won't have any way to explain why or how. Like, assuming that Luca didn't already have a crush on him in the original timeline, which she clearly also does. <laughs> but we learn, he, he figures that out in a minute. Um, so Krisu and Rintaro plan on how Rintaro should be a boyfriend. And they both argue um, in the street because they are both nerd virgins. And so they don't know anything about dating. And so they buy a manual. I, I love this scene. This is so know, good. This, is, so this good. is one of my favorite scenes. Especially, <laughs> 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 it, it, it starts out um, sounding like Chris is explaining him how to go on a date. And then they reveal that they bought a manual and they're reading from it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's, just, and it's yeah. the worst possible manual, too. It really oh, is. yeah, it's, like, super, yeah, just weird and old-fashioned. And, like, and like before we even get to that point, like, in the street when they're arguing, you know, Kirisu, like, calls uh, Ritara a, a virgin, and he's like, well, you're a virgin, too. And she's like, B whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hilarious that these two people just fumbling in the dark decide to be like, oh, let's get a book on it, because that's what we know. <laughs> Kurisu is clearly the game's, like, official, um, like, love target. And I think this scene shows that they really do have great chemistry. I mean, out of, out of all the girls, it's probably the, the most suitable to be. They're, they're both equally mm -hmm. clueless. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's funny, because, like, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely agree. Like, I feel like they're almost, like, the best match. Although I wasn't sure if the game was kind of directing us to go... Toward like with the, the game was trying to match up, you know, Rintar and Chris or um, um, Mayur Mayuri. I think Mayuri is more like a little sister. So they're, they're like childhood friends, and yeah, yeah, that's my read as well. Oh no, hey, I agree with that. I don't know what the game's gonna do. I'm, you know, I'm hedging my. I don't know these games, you know, these visual novels. You know, no, what what they're gonna throw at you? I don't know. I, I think I think the game is pretty clearly showing you that Rintar and Kurisu are the the final pair. Because it's actually developing a relationship as opposed to like, it's very sort of one dimensional with Mayuri. Right. Whereas like, sure. like, this builds up to a place where like, okay, we could, when you have that emotional payoff of like, oh, they're actually going to like each other and express mm -hmm. the, the fact that they like each other to each other. You know, that kind of thing is, you know, it's very, not traditional, but it's kind of expected. No, I know. Yeah. And the game yeah. just repeatedly writing off Mayuri literally. <laughs> <laughs> they <Yeah>. literally kill her. <laughs> They're like, no, is that going to happen, Chief? You might want to sit with that. <laughs> <laughs> might as well just get used to that. And just the way that he reacts to the different characters. I mean, it's it's pretty... I think it's it's pretty clear in how he like reacts to and thinks about Mayuri versus Kurisu, like, which one is romantic and one is not. Yeah. And we're actually still like... like you can almost see the parts where we're mid-arc in him turning around because now that he has to seek out her like in almost every one of these he has to go to her for for uh advice he's getting nicer and nicer when he like approaches her to get her advice yeah like i think he called her like the genius neuroscientist or something to this this uh playthrough it's like groundhog day but you're kind of rooting for him this time instead of <laughs> it just being this sort of random like i guess he's got to get with her to get out of this but you know <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so they so they read the manual on dating and they think of like dates to go on and stuff like that. And the this is ridiculous. So then Chris is like, "Well, you could take her to a nice restaurant. You could take her to this. Take her to that." And he's and and, and she's then they're finally like, "Well, you could just like walk around. Like that's a date. You could just walk around the shops." And he's like, "Oh, good, because I don't want to like waste money." And it's like, "What? Why do you care about wasting money? You're about to change the timeline. <laughs> Spend all your damn money." I, I love it. It is great. <laughs> and then he takes her to, like a family restaurant, which is basically like you know Applebee's. <laughs> Which is extremely, like, 19-year-old date. Like, I got it, yeah. Yeah, teen date, very, very much. But, God. So they just walk around and don't talk to each other because Luca can't fucking talk. <laughs> She's too shy. And Murtar doesn't know what to talk about, which is he's just a dumbass. He, he's shy in his own way because he doesn't understand what's going on, in, in like, internally. He's trying to perform the date. Like, so, so he's not, he's, like, it's the classic, the classic, like, 
young person dating thing where you're all of a sudden you're not just two people you're like trying to perform your role in the relationship and you like oh i gotta do this right and i gotta do this right and you're so focused on like what you're supposed to do that you don't you forget about just like being two people yeah Yeah. like the idea that he needs to listen to her and then respond appropriately sounds like rules as opposed to just no you need to listen to this person (laughs) and then respond when you feel like you need to say something that's what you've been doing this whole time rentaro (laughs) Right, you know, like you don't have to focus on breathing; just do it. Well, Carissi's explaining it from the manual. It's like they call it conversation catch, and in there, it's like you have to do this and that to pretend like you're actually listening instead of just you know listening. So yeah, he's messed up on this on this dating book, and he, it also kind of hits him that him and Luca like don't have a lot in common. Like mm-hmm. they don't have a lot to talk about. Like they don't have. It, they 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 don't have a lot to talk about, and she just is like so completely passive. That she's just like waiting for her to. She, she's just waiting for him to to do everything, and then she's just kind of along for the ride, and uh, which is also frustrating because like she surely has an idea in her head of like what she wants, but she can't say it. So she's just is like I ho-, you know it's kind of like oh I hope he reads my mind and does what I want. Mm. Yep. But she finally does take the first step. When she reminds him when they met. Yeah. Yeah. So they met in a bad situation. Yeah. It was out in the middle of uh, Kibahara. And there were a bunch of creepy photographers. And they saw uh, a girl in... Um, well, this is this is actually Rintaro's. We don't know if this is the same... Um, meeting that happened origin story yeah in sort of this quote-unquote timeline but um yeah they saw um luca dressed in the shrine maiden's outfit and thought she was cosplaying and asked to take pictures including upskirts and a whole bunch of shit yeah and she was repeatedly trying to say that she's a guy and that she's not cosplaying and they got mad. Yeah, they got mad. About it. And Rint- Rintaro's comment on that is that um, those guys aren't true otaku because uh, if they were, like Daru, they would have been like, that's great. <laughs> 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 so there's a lesson for everyone. <laughs> so they were harassing her, and Rintaro stepped in and did his whole Chunibyo routine. And was like, it doesn't matter, you know, gender doesn't matter, regardless, you know, of, of whatever, you're a person and you... I don't, I don't remember exactly what he said, but basically just like, you can, you shouldn't let those let anybody push you around. Yeah, it like, the speech was, it doesn't matter, but also you need to have more confidence. So you are my disciple now, and I'm going to buy you this 980 yen sword, and you're going to practice with the sword. Yeah. So. You need you need more confidence. Now you're going to do exactly what I say, stranger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take this plastic sword. It's also very similar to the way he deals with uh, Mayuri, where he's just like, no, you're my hostage now, so I'm going to get you out of this funk by putting you in a trap, and then you're going to listen to what I say. It's just <laughs> like, he doesn't know what to do, but he can figure out if he just yells at them a lot, they'll just, but in the right way, then they'll, they'll understand. But it's also, it's sweet. It's just, he doesn't, yeah. he, he's just dumb, but it's just sweet. It is sweet because, like, I'm looking back on all the texts that Lukaku was sending us, and it, they always, like, sign it off with, like, I took 20 practice swings with the Samadari today, and I had no <laughs> idea what it meant. And it's like, what the hell is this 20 swings? And it's like, oh, it's a, it's sword. a sword. It is the Cursed Demon Sword that will help. Uh, her get rid of his right arm curse or something like that. Also, it's roughly less than ten dollars, including tax. Including tax. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, and so when Luca recalls this meeting, um, the this and she even says like, ah, uh, yeah, when you said that, like, it made me, you know, it made me feel better, and I liked you ever since then. And he was like, wait a minute, like, so something like that happened with, with this Luca, but this Luca would not have required the inspiration that gender doesn't matter, because this Luca is cis, so, like, what? And so he's confused, and he's like, 
And then he makes this, he finally has this realization that Luca has a crush on him in both world lines. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, honey. You're, you're, you're making it. You're getting there. Yeah. Also, it took him way, way too long. Oh, what a, a good what lord. A what a shock. <laughs> uh, so he realizes it. Um, it's not, he's not good at dating. Um, the next thing I wrote in my notes is just, you better go back in time and do this again, but better, I swear to God. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't? Nope. Um, and, he makes uh, it worse. He makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. he decides the best, the best thing to do is to take it to a comic book convention. Yeah. Oh, God. But, but there's a little while, um, let's see, Daru gets mad that Rintaro has a girlfriend and calls him a normie a or normal. something like that. yeah. God, oh, remember 2009? I love, I, this was the best trip down memory lane. Uh, oh, and then he finally, he, so he, then he questions Luca about the gender doesn't matter comment and like her remembering that. And, um, she gets embarrassed and cancels the next date. <laughs> she <laughs> clearly remembered. Yeah. And it's just, it's so like, like, he doesn't even know how to respond to that. Like, he's not, he's never like, oh, yeah, oh, wait, I should probably go talk to her again and try to work this out because obviously I've done the wrong thing here. He's just like, now I'm going to go on a bridge and, and just be moody. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so bad. He just feels like an asshole for, with, he just can't, he just can't do it. He just can't do it. I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem like it's that hard. But okay, like he just he just takes it so seriously. I think is the thing. He takes it like really, really to heart, and that's why he's he can't just like pretend to be a boyfriend or like pretend to be in love with her. Like he just can't bring himself to do it. He everything has to be a hundred percent sincere, and so he can't be sincere. So he doesn't feel that way <laughs> about Luca. I yeah. mean, th- we kind of get into this towards the end of like this first section, but. I kind of read it as him still being really serious about the time travel and about Mayuri and almost being like distracted with everything else to the point where he can't really do the boyfriend thing. Yeah, he can't like get into it. I mean, it's a factor in all this. He also doesn't know what would make Luca happy. Like he does like the, he goes by the book and says like, this is what every girl likes, which is, you know, there is no formula for that. Yeah, yeah, he does do that. Like, he tries to do it by the book, so he is trying, but it's just so against him. Like, it is so not him to the point where it's it's just fake. And, and it's not Luca, either. No, it's it's neither of them. So. so, yeah, so yeah, for the last day, he's just like, I'm gonna try to do something that won't make Luca sad. I've only been making Luca upset, and I don't want her to be upset. So he takes her to Komima. <laughs> Um, with Mayuri, which makes her upset. She doesn't want to come. Well, this is the worst thing that he could have done, honestly. Like, <laughs> so bad. let's take Luca Kota Comic Con, where she doesn't want to cosplay, and she spends all of her time with Mayuri, who wants to get her to cosplay, and also she has to be around all the cosplayers, which probably reminds her about the whole mean cosplayer thing, and she's just miserable the entire day. Doesn't even get to see. Rintaro that much, and Rintaro acts like he's not into it at all. Yeah, and she's like, what do you want to see? And he's like, I don't know, I don't really care. And she's like, well, I don't really care. And it's like, do you not really care? Or do you, are you just like, you know, she's like so shy that she can't say what she wants. So mm-hmm. she's just like, assume, you know, she needs him to take her around. Yeah. But Mayuri is very happy. Yeah. Well, they have to take a bus there, which I'm sure was super crowded. Yeah, it's a really shy person in a really crowded space. It's just, this is a ba- this was a bad idea, Rintaro. This was a totally yeah. bad idea. And someone who specifically has stated they want alone time with you, and then you're like, oh, let's go to this giant convention where there's almost no time for us to interact. Yeah, where we can easily get separated. Yeah, easily get separated. I won't even have to see you. Yeah, he's definitely trying to run away in, in this scenario in in that sense. He doesn't really like being alone with Luca because he still hasn't figured this whole thing out. 
And at the end of the day, Luke was like, oh, I was really happy being your girlfriend all this time, you know, for these three days. Thank you. That was so great. And, um, the, my, I don't remember what happened next because I just wrote, what is this girl's deal? Yes, leap, leap, leap. Do it right, fucker. Aw, he only goes back to Komima. I really think that this situation is just, just I, this was sad. This is a sad scene because it's kind of like, okay, she's at the end of the whole boyfriend deal. And they have not connected whatsoever. Uh, they're gonna time leap. They're they're gonna lose this timeline. But also, Rentaro doesn't really give a shit about you at all. So well, so he has some regrets as after the end of the day, he's like he he's realizing that this wasn't fun for for anyone except Mayuri. No, it wasn't. And even as Luca, you know, is is crying and saying that you had fun dating, uh, he. We get a text box saying that he knows that's a lie. Mm -hmm. It is. It's just her being polite for him playing along, but also realizing that's all it was. That's all it was. It was just him playing along. So, but she does um, give him uh, the pager number. Uh, and I think she said something along the lines of like, oh no, she didn't say this. I think she says it next time. So n disregard that. But he, he, yeah, he, so he's unsatisfied with that, and he's like, I'm gonna do it my way, and he goes back to the beginning of that last day, and instead of going to the Comic-Con, he takes Luca back to the, str the shrine and takes on his Kiyoma persona, and they just do sword training all day, and, which is what they normally do together, and Luca has fun, and I think that... I don't, he, I don't think he quite realizes it, but I think the moral of the story is that Luca had a crush on Halloween Kiyoma. They kind of frame it as Rintaro having this realization of, okay, what's what's going on here? What's wrong? We connected over the whole Halloween Kiyoma thing and the training with the sword and all that, and he kind of realizes that that's really all we had. We have nothing else in common beyond that. So to push that aside, it's... It, it just becomes really forced. To me, it was just... It was as simple as that wasn't... You know, what what they were doing over the past few days wasn't their relationship, at, you know, it, as yeah. friends leading up to this point. Yeah, I think... I, that's kind of where I'm leaning. Yeah, is toward that part, where it's just like, this is what she wanted to do, because this is what she liked to do with him. And, like, you know, natural relationships sort of go from this basis of things that are in common and then expand and like there was just this huge sidestep to stuff that neither of them like were enjoying or yeah or even like dating doesn't have to be this like formal ritual where you have to go out to dinner or you have to like take them to a big thing yeah. you know what i mean it's just yeah. like you can just do what you want to do as long as you enjoy the time together mm -hmm. especially if you're friends first because i think like that's a that's a awkward transition for any age mm -hmm. and like when you when you say to someone like you know Oh, we're just going to be boyfriend and girlfriend now? That's a weird thing to do because, like, that's not what your relationship was. Like, you, like they grow. Though, honestly, if you're if you're going if you're going from friends into that sort of relationship, saying straight up that you're you're now boyfriend and girlfriend, that is such a relief to be able to draw that line. So, for all the people who are taking dating advice from this podcast, <laughs> should be all of you. One. Just do the same thing you did with your partner that you did as friends, because you were friends. And two, you will be constantly having sex just for the rest of your life. Just take water breaks. Turn yourself from an incel to a wind cell. Oh my god, I'm quitting this podcast. Spend a maximum of $10 at Toys R Us while it's still open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how that's how far back we recorded these episodes. Yeah, I, I just, as I was saying that, I'm like, wait a second, that's wrong. <laughs> also, any any incels listening to the podcast? Okay, stop listening. Okay, y'all, <laughs> you ready for this? Please go to therapy and stop listening. Go stop those people. Uh, so yeah, so she just wanted him to act like he always does, um, and he just got so caught up in the word boyfriend that he was uh, trying to act weird and different. And finally, when he does that, Lukaku says, "Yes, I remembered. I, I did regain my memories from the previous world line." She admits that she broke the computer, and she's say, she's pretending to not be upset about how she knows that they have to return to the previous world line. And right before he, so he, so finally she says, "Yes, okay, send it." 
I, I'll, I, I'm okay with it. And right before he, you know, he like holds up his phone, and he's like gonna send it, and he's walked away from her, and, uh, she runs up to him and grabs onto him and, and cries and says that she doesn't want to go back to being a boy, uh, mainly because she feels like she would be unable to admit her feelings for Rintaro in that other world line. And this is really heartbreaking because I think, you know, at the end of the day, Luca, your feelings are not reciprocated regardless. Yeah, and mm. even even Rintaro, uh, he he says uh, possibly one of the line, one of the lines that got the biggest laugh out of me. But uh, he said, uh, "I understand. Uh, um, I have nothing against homosexuals, but." <laughs> <laughs> 2009 ass thing to say. 2009, that's Seinfeld. Nothing's really wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and he, and he, but he says like possibly one of the only acceptable things after that is like, but I'm 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 straight. I'm I'm heterosexual. So I I I just cannot separate those feelings. And also, I think Luca understands that like the difficulties. Implant like like this is a world that isn't going to be super accepting no matter what you like if if you're a guy expressing love for another guy you know what world you live in and like that's a scary thing to face and if mm-hmm. she's you know and she knows like that that that, that, that could be a possibility in another timeline and that's like people understand the way the world works and the not the way the world works but the way that the world will perceive them. And the way that they can already know what what they're gonna get back, and that's a scary friggin' thing. Mm-hmm. And and Luca asks Rintaro to remember her as a girl, and ah, oh, it's rough. It's rough. I mean, it's so focused on Luca having a crush on Rintaro, but there's definitely like like this this larger context of like this is the rest of Luca's life, not just this particular crush that she had when she was sixteen. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, and Rintaro has, I like that it comes down really hard on Rintaro at this point, because this is, like, the third one. Like, it was Suzuha, where, you know, they undid that, which was pretty much Suzuha telling him that they had to undo that. That was, like, all planned. Then it was Ferris, which, at the end, she kind of gave him permission to do it. It's like, yeah, I'm kind of scared, but, you know, this is how it has to be. This is for the good of Mayuri. But then, kill my dad for the anime. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's this where it's somebody begging you not to, and it's like, how the hell do you, would you even deal with that? So let's see what happens when he doesn't. And then we go back and we tell Chris, "You were right. I shouldn't have said anything." I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking as we when we learned that uh, the Luca was the one that broke the IBN fifty one hundred. I'm like. Okay, well, you can send a text that just says not, you know, that prevents Don't that. Break it. And then... <laughs> Don't break that thing. Yeah, and they talk about that. Oh, they do. They, they talk do about it, that? and he's like afraid to try it because it's just messing with it further. Right. Like, who will this kill? But you do have the divergence meter. But, you know, I mean, look, to be fair, you could come up with a thousand things, but you don't know. I don't know. I mean, look, when you're developing in Git, you do, you know, if you branch off of a branch, you're, you are you keep going. Oh, man. I think I probably had a better audience hit rate for the people listening for dating advice. <laughs> <laughs> look, we've all been there. And actually, probably maybe not, actually. Never mind. We got SMTP. <laughs> we got Git. What else can we hit in this podcast? Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, yeah, so at this point, um, you know, you have the choice of, am I going to send the email? Am I going to not send it? So if you don't send it, Rintaro says he can't bring himself to sacrifice anyone else's memories. This is too much. And, um... <laughs> and you best and to so, give it up. Yeah. And they go to, and they go to uh, Komima, which they didn't go to today. They go there at the end of the day to meet Mayuri uh, an hour before she is scheduled to die. Well, Rintaro does. Uh, Luca doesn't. Oh, he does. Luca doesn't, yeah. Yeah. And, uh... Wow. And, and so... that's, that's... Yeah, that, that's a scene. This is a very weird ending. <laughs> so Daru's there, Mayuri's there. This is... This is so... So much about this ending, like, I feel like, like... It doesn't have the, like, emotional weight that the other endings had. Like, it just... It's just kind of like, why would anyone pick this? This doesn't make any sense. 
So Mayuri does die this time just out of like a heart attack or something. Yeah, she's a heart attack for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the universe got ran out of ideas. Or CERN CERN got lucky that time. <laughs> and, and Daru is also there and like Rintaro was prepared for this, but Daru just doesn't know what to do with the situation. Mayuri just collapses in front of him. The scenery before Daru shows up is is like this this nice thing where um Rintaro is trying to set up like Mayuri having you know, good final moments and they were watching the stars they were sitting down watching the stars in the sky and yeah, she has a heart attack and Daru uh, is like do something and Rintaro's like, I can't, she's he he has already accepted it and they have an awkward fight because of that. And like I so before this actually takes place, like we do, we get that scene where like he remembers the one in the morning, right when they they talked about the festival, and it's weird. Like it seems to set up something larger with Mayuri, but it really doesn't pay off. Like it just kind of happens. So I mean, it's it feels like it was trying to be just another kind of scene where it's like, oh, it's Mayuri and she's happy. And talking, and now she's gonna die because you chose that she dies. There is, um, we get, um, I think at least one message from from Luca um, that is, she's asking, "No, is this really okay?" I, you know, she's she's having a lot of guilt over this too. And um, Rintaro says, basically, "This, is, I made this decision. This is my burden to bear." You know, trying to absolve Luca of any guilt, but of course she feels very guilty about this too. Yeah, at this point for, for Luca it's only theoretical. I mean she didn't experience Mayuri dying before. Yeah, but she 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 fully believes Rintaro that it's about to happen. She believes it, but it's hard to hard to like be fully into it if you haven't actually seen it. Right. Yeah. I mean she gets much worse after Mayuri actually dies. Yeah. Yeah. And it kinda seems like there's a lot of foreboding in this during the conversation with Mayuri. So like Mayuri is kinda like, oh so you guys aren't gonna break up, right? And then, yeah, no, we're, we won't split up. And there's this whole thing of her being like, oh, then everything's great. And it, it like the implication being everything's not great. It, but it just keeps, it goes on for a long time before she actually does. So. Huh. And so then, uh, Luca is, is, uh, what is it? Luca's upset. They have the funeral, they fast forward to the funeral and everything. Well, they kind of skip over... No, it's key because, yeah, Rintar was pretty much... Yeah, it just, like, skips forward like a month? Uh, three days. I think it's a week, but Rintaro is, like, completely unresponsive during this time. He's just sitting there catatonic, not eating, not not talking. They do talk about the funeral and, like, it was extremely sad. Rintaro didn't go to the funeral. Right. No. With a vigil or anything. Because like he very much feels like he killed her. And Krisu says a really interesting thing to him where she's like, I don't blame you because only you can understand the meaning of this choice. Like, by the nature of time, I can't understand what what you've gone through. So I can't say that it's your fault or not. Only you know. <laughs> Thank you, Krisu. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks a bunch. <laughs> At least I don't know how much you fucked up. Only you can destroy yourself from the inside. <laughs> and she's like, you should go talk to Luca, though, because Luca uh, heard this and, like, believed it, but, may- yeah, but maybe didn't really believe it. And um, now she understands very well that she did did literally make, you know, that that's literally what happened. Like, he said Myra was going to die, and she did. Whether or not that, I mean, that technically wasn't her decision. That, that's still, like, it happened because of her, in a way, and it's... Yeah, she feels the guilt as well. Rintaro, she, she might blame herself. You gotta make sure you take this all on yourself, right. okay? So, yeah. This is... <laughs> P.S. I have a crush on you. This is the foundation of a <laughs> the foundation of a great relationship going forward, so yeah, uh, it should be fun. This is what you get for not dating me, Rintaro. Yeah, but so Luca is, like, upset and she's like, you know, we're accomplices. Like, Carisi says they're accomplices and Luca says that they're, also says that they are accomplices at this point. And um, she wants to, like, bear the burden of time travel with Rintaro. 
And so she asks him to have her time leap back to the previous day so that she could change the past and go and cosplay for Mayuri and, like, give her what she wanted before she dies. Yeah. And so the cool thing about this ending is that we finally get to see what it's like when someone else time leaps from Rintaro's perspective. Rintaro, uh, he is uh, very much... He's, at first, pretty against this idea because he doesn't know what will happen. You know, we we only know that it'll work for him. You know, could scramble Luca's brains. A whole lot could go wrong. But he eventually gives in because Luca... Luca stands up at this point and for herself is extremely confident um, for Luca's standards. Yeah, Luca has a real moment, like a real character change after Mayuri dies. She wants to make Mayuri as happy as possible. Well, first she wants to try, like, can't we send the email or go back or try to save her? And oh, Ritara's yeah. just like, no, it's I cannot do this anymore. I can't try to save her anymore. And and Luca gets a little bit mad where it's like, I thought, you know, you were childhood friends and wouldn't you do anything to save her? And Rintara has to be like, look, you have no idea how much I've time traveled to try and save her. I'm done. It's like at least seven times. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, eventually Luca does travel back. Um, and... Uh, we do see what happens from Wintaro's perspective. Yeah, so he's at the same point in time, um, and he sort of has the experience, he's just suddenly in a different place, he's suddenly at the shrine. Yeah, it's just like, it's still seven days, or several days after Mayuri's death, whatever date that is. And Luca realizes, Luca like comes up to him and is like, oh, did you just, did you just, we just got back, like I just got back, and like he's like, oh yeah, I'm back now, so tell me about what happened. So from Luca's perspective, it was old Rintaro who didn't know what was going on up until that moment, and then it was like, oh, now he's back. Right. I think it's like his reading Steiner kicked in or something. Yeah, yeah. it would have to, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but up in the opposite direction. Like, right. So, and then Luca shows Rintaro photos of them at uh, Kamima uh, cosplaying with Mayuri. Wearing that same outfit that we saw her before in. It's extremely sad. The end is very sad. It's so sad. It really is. This is a sad ending. This one was such a huge bummer. I, 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 I sort of saw that as bittersweet because they, they were... It, it is very sad, but they got to... Um, I don't know, got to make it very happy for Mayori and it, like CERN didn't intervene in any way. It's sad from the perspective of we can time travel and it just like Rintaro has just like kind of left Mayuri to this fate. But from the perspective of if she was going to die, then at least we get to like spend the time with her doing what she loved in the way that we did with Luca, in fact. And like it, from Rintaro's perspective, he, you know, his, I guess, giving up, that might be fully understandable from, from that perspective because he's tried m many times and... Uh, all evidence points to this being a universal constant, you know, aside from the divergence meter. But who knows if he yeah. can ever reach there. Like, we know that there is a Steins Gate ending where Mayuri probably lives, or that he can be successful, right. or at least we know that more is going to happen. But, like, if you, like, if you immerse yourself into Rintaro's, you know what I mean? Like, this could be, like, look, I'm fighting fate here. Like, this is enough's enough. Like, I can't change destiny any more than I've yeah. tried now, you know? There is a limit to a 19-year-old's uh, yeah. mental stability for that. And if she, if she's going to die at least the last day, she can be doing what she loved with, the, like, her friends. Yeah. And, that, and, and so that's that's also pretty sad now that I've said it, so forget it, I guess. But it's but it's very different than like being captured by CERN for inventing time travel, right? Yeah. It almost mm -hmm. is sort of like it's, it's like almost natural at that point. I'm wondering though why CERN, why this is the timeline where CERN doesn't care about the time travel stuff anymore. CERN really hates cosplay. They can't even stand it. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or is it like, well, Rintaro's sad enough. We, we, our job is done. I mean, there have been a few where CERN didn't intervene, um, and it just happened still, like, her going onto the train tracks and stuff. Yeah, they do, they, they've they broken it up enough where CERN hasn't tracked them down, and they get to have some kind of resolution. CERN is not, apparently, a, a universal constant. Yeah. 
Sun, Sun isn't attacking them, attacking them directly at this point, and it is kind of explained why uh, later. So it's not a yeah. Mm. Also, like given all that we know, the last picture of the three of them, like like Miyuri's got a big smile, and the other two have like half smiles, and it's mm. just like oh, they know what's gonna happen. It's just they framed the whole thing as like, okay, we are the only two people left on Earth that are like time travelers, and we know what time travel is like, and we're disconnected from causality. So let's just be together and just like be partners in grief almost. So now they finally have something in common. Like what? Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was actually a good point. It's like that Breakfast at Tiffany song, but horrible. Oh my well, god. Lyrically. Also, isn't this exactly the same thing he has with Suzuha in their timeline? Like, pretty much the only thing they have is like, hey, we don't have anyone else. I think Suzuha and Rintaro <laughs> had more natural chemistry than Rintaro and yeah. Luka. Yeah, at least they bantered a little bit in front of the old uh, CRT shop. Did you watch the end of the credits? Yeah, they have a baby. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, the baby mm. shop. Yep. Of course. Because... The baby. Where it doesn't look like they have really aged at <laughs> all. Maybe the baby is... <laughs> <laughs> it's a new Mayuri. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Would they name the baby Mayuri? I hate when time travel stories do that stuff though, where they have to wrap everything so like there's really only like three characters, but because of time loops there's like you know what I yeah. mean? Like Yeah. And then that baby became Mayuri. But they needed to show the baby. You yeah. need to show the baby because this because this, this is a very genital based story. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they were like, "Look, this, this ending could only happen in this timeline with this configuration." Honestly, I'm surprised it wasn't a gender reveal party. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> this is the uterus timeline. <laughs> but no, they uh, even they even made that um, Mayuri's time travel backwards to be a part of like them being together like um oh lucas time travel yeah yeah sorry lucas time travel backwards um because she's um she says uh or i'm sorry rintaro says that he's disconnected from reality and like no one can understand him and lucas says all right let me let me do that so that i can understand yeah she says she wants to be the same as him so that's a lot that was that was an interesting i mean yeah it's a lot and it's 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 heavy. I think the reason, another reason why it sucks so much is like I very much read like Luca's crush on Rintaro to be like a like a teen crush that like she would grow out of, you know, like she would move on and like live a happy life like without him reciprocating anything. But she just needed to grow up a little bit, and so this whole like it just feels very much like ah, just throwing it all away for this like passing crush I have on a guy who doesn't even reciprocate my feelings. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he reciprocates in his own way towards the end, but yeah, it's. It can only happen in this timeline. I mean, I really feel for Luca because she's just given this choice where it's like, okay, we can. You can throw your entire life away and go to this other timeline, but if you don't, someone's. You know, someone you really like is going to die. It's like, it's, what a horrible choice. Yeah, what would you pick if you were Luca? I don't know. That's a better question than would, what if you were Rintaro. If you were, what would you do if you were Luca? Yeah, Rintaro kind of messed this up himself, but Luca was just an innocent. I got to be honest. It's kind of an it's an unfair choice because it's it is a huge leap of faith to even a, like a fr- like a good friend of yours is like you have to change something fun- you believe fundamentally about yourself or whatever, um, but or this other person's gonna die because even if the other person dies, then you're kind of like. Yeah, but was that really the, you know what I mean, the cause? Like, it's a lot to swallow, and they have to, I understand the game has to give them some kind of, like, okay, I sort of innately feel like this is a true thing, but it's just a lot to believe. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy to sit here and say, like, well, I don't know what I would do, but in reality, I'm gonna, I would go so far as to say, I don't know very many people who would be, like... Or, you know what, they might even just arbitrarily say, yeah, change it, whatever. You know? Like, I don't think you can even appreciate the gravity of what's actually happening here, because it's such a big leap of faith you gotta take. Yeah, we don't know the causality here at all. At all. Yeah, that's that's what I think I would do. I would be like, yeah, sure, whatever. I think that might be 
I think that might be the entire reason why some people have like selective memory of other timelines. Otherwise, it would not have the kind of gravity that it does. Speaking of uh, selective memory of the timeline, uh, Luca also remembers the other timeline. Yeah, we mentioned yeah. that. Oh, we did? Yeah. But she does. She Before she makes the decision, she's like, yeah, I did remember and everything. So she, she does remember. So I think that's, yeah, that's another thing. Is like, if what would you do if you also had the memory of the original timeline? Where the thing about you, like some fundamental aspect of, of your identity was different. I mean, it's it's tricky, right? Because if, like, Faris, like, technically has the choice of, like, do I want my father to die or this person's friend to, or my friend to die? You know what I mean? Where it's 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 tough to say, really. Like, and also, that guilt that guilt impacts your decision because as soon as you remember oh, something, you have like you're immediately inclined to be like, "Oh crap!" Then I guess it does it. Like you automatically assume that your agency is elevated because you remember both timelines. It's you know though it's a, just a tough question in general. Like if you were to ask that about me, like right now in my life, and it's like, well, does that mean my kids aren't around? Because in that case, bye bye, Miori. You know, sorry. You know, shit happens. Yeah, I'm being facetious, kind of. But you know what I mean? Like, it's tough to say to like if you're 16 or whatever. Like, how about this fundamental? Like, yeah, maybe I am okay with that, but maybe you wouldn't be in 10 years. Yeah, and like a lot, but also like being 16, there's a lot of fundamental things about you that aren't decided yet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, yeah. And also, if, if she remembers the other timeline, she probably knows how miserable she was in that timeline. Yeah. Um, because of, like, she's pretty miserable, like, in general, even as a girl, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, but, to, well, yeah, but with the, the gender yeah. issues on top of that, um, she's probably much more miserable. So, let's talk about those gender issues real quick. Uh, so, there was... I've been lot- waiting for this. <laughs> Cracks knuckles. I gotta go to the bathroom for, like, half an hour. <laughs> so, there was a lot of contention f- since the first episode where we said Luke was trans, and, um, p- a lot of people were saying, you know, uh, you know, that that is, might not be the case, you know, wait until you learn more. So, now having known Luca's uh, reasoning, you know, saying that he wanted to be a girl so that she could be with Rintaru... Do you all still feel that same way? I think that's just just on the surface. I mean, that's what she feels right now. But I think she she's also like if, even even in the original timeline, yeah, she was she was trans. Um, her gender was yeah. Yeah, I, I think th- I mean, there's definitely people. I think you know you're gonna have people who are older than 16 who have who have gone through similar experiences and feelings to Luca who ended up being a trans woman and who ended up not not being a trans woman and you know all of those experiences are valid if you relate to your own experience my my reading my like my gut reading of of luca right off the bat was was as a, a trans woman but um you know those again she's 16 so there's a lot of possible outcomes for yeah. that at those feelings at that time yeah i think a big thing too is so there's a lot there's, there's not just reading of, of Luca as trans, it's the, the reading of, of everyone, uh, specifically Rintaro and other people, as transphobic. And I think it's more it's, it's, it's more important to emphasize the fact that like there's a difference between homophobic and transphobic, and a lot of transphobia is denial of trans existence. So like when mm-hmm. people don't want to acknowledge someone else, the way that someone else identifies that can like that has an impact on their life and like sort of that like doesn't mean that, that, that someone is automatically like excluded from this conversation so Rintaro can be acting transphobic without you know being a bad person in the end towards Luca and I think that's probably important to emphasize like listen some people sometimes people do shitty stuff but realize not realize but at least incorporate that into their worldview to start acting better towards someone else and i think that we eventually get that sort of resolution it's not great it is this is a compromised timeline no matter how we parse it but it is kind of important to incorporate that into the way we're reading this Mm. it's a it's a pretty broad conversation too right rintaro if, if we talk about within the game you know rintaro is a teenager in 2009 japan and doesn't have 
the um, the sort of uh, what am I trying to say here? Like the scope yeah. or the the world, or I guess like the worldliness, maybe, or maybe not even the knowledge or the vocabulary to describe what he's feeling or talking about. You know, and it's kind of like there, like there's like sort of a level of ignorance there that. You know, you could say, like, maybe in an older person, or I don't know, maybe, like, in general, like, he should be going out and learning, but at this point in his life, or at this point in his environment, or the world, or his society, you know, he doesn't have that avenue open to him just yet to learn about it, you know? He's doing, um, he's not doing the right thing per se, but it's more out of, like, ignorance than anything else, you know? And to be, and uh, I forget when Steins Gate was written, 2010, 2012, was that it? Uh, 2009. The same year it's happened. Okay, yeah, 2009. Yeah. So it's a game written in 2009 Japan as well, you know? So you don't know if this game was written 10 years later. Maybe it would have uh, made different choices in terms of, like, pronouns and, like, how Ugo is described, etc. You know, I, it's it's hard to say exactly. Yeah, I mean, LGBT issues in, in general have just, like, in, in the last two or three years started to, to gain, like, publicity in Japan. Like, people started yeah, talking about yeah. it. Uh, it it's, Even in the um, US and, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's comparing to the US. It's like um, J- Japan is really far behind still right now. Uh, in in a mm-hmm. different way, by the way. I mean, I don't think we see as much hatred here. Uh, it's mostly in ignorance, um, and it's mostly people have to act um, the way everyone else acts. So there are a lot of gay and trans people here who are gay and trans and. But but they don't talk about it at all, and they might even marry like people of the opposite gender just uh, for show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I think you know there's there's challenge in it too, and there's context to parse because obviously if someone tells you like let's say what pronouns you prefer, you should you should respect their wishes. You know, um, what's tricky when you talk about characters in a visual novel, you know, this is you have to say okay, well, what did the writer intend for? having like what is the writer intending here exactly and did the right is the writer you know what i mean like that's these things you have to dig down and parse yeah. you know it's not as simple as just like this is well i have to follow a rule setter like you have to figure it out like that's that's really the whole point of the podcast too is like you don't just blindly go with like well whatever you know you have to like really think it through yeah the writers are are limited by their perspective as well if luca was a real person who i i knew and a, a or or talked about, or even just existed, uh, I, I would use the he pronouns because that's what uh, Luca prefers. Regardless of if they, you know, are trans or not, you know, that's that's up to them to dis- to decide. I don't think she even prefers that. I mean, in Japanese, the um, third person pronouns aren't that important to begin with. You don't really use them all that much. Mm. The, the pronoun that is used is like the first person pronoun, which in English is just the same for, for any gender. Mm-hmm. But in Japanese, right. they have several uh, used in different circumstances. And Luca uses in like both as a um, genetically male and genetically female person, she uses Boku, which is the like. It, it's the one that's a little ambiguous because there are women who use this, like tomboys, and it's, it's mm. mostly used by men like more passive men, more feminine men, or younger men. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and yeah, it, it doesn't really say much. Um, yeah, it's a huge thing. It's just that Luca herself is so shy and, like, a, and, and accommodating and not wanting to cause conflict that it's hard to tell how Luca feels, like, at her core. And she's still fig- she yeah. can still be figuring it out. But even if she was a thousand percent certain, she would never say anything. (laughs) (laughs) So I've been playing um, one of the Steins Gate um, side games, um, spin-off games, and there are several of them. Uh, This one in this anthology, it's actually coming out in English next year. Um, It's an anthology um, of short stories, um, each one from one different character's um, perspective. Uh, so there are stories for, for uh, each of the main characters in Steins Gate. And they, they take place um, like all around. Some of them are like um, things that actually happen in the game just from different characters' perspective. And some of them are like in um, Divergent 3 point something. So it's like an alternate universe story. Okay. And the, the Lucas story is basically this ending, this Lucas ending from Lucas' point of view. So, oh, so wow. 
we see how she travels back in time to go to Komima and, and cosplay. Um, and it, it has a little twist at the end, but that doesn't, isn't really important. Uh, so I don't think this is actually written by the same person who wrote the game. Um, but it does make a lot of things clear. I mean, uh, and I think it, 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 it makes it even clear that, that yeah, that she's, she's, um, she's trans in real life. One thing does, it does it that, um, she talks about how she's been having dreams since, since she was like a very little girl about being a boy. And they were more like nightmares. So mm-hmm. it makes it look like, like this isn't really something sudden. The memories were always there, but just really um, buried. But she definitely talks about these dreams as if they were, they were nightmares. That wasn't what she really is. Um, and yeah. that's, a, that's a good way to expand oh the story here. And by the way, this, this, particular, this particular side story is also nice because you get to see her travel back in time and then you get to see how the rest of the characters uh, react to Mayuri's death. Um, oh, yeah. Because she encounters them, she actually had to jump twice to get to the to Komima. Mm. Um, it's one of the short stories I like better in this game. I mean, uh, varying qualities. Well, I'll have to try and pick that up when it comes out in English. In 2019, when this episode comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. I think it's, it's going to be the, um, the, the, the PS4 and Steam um, bonus for buying Steins Gate Elite. Oh, yeah. And if you buy it on the Switch, you don't get it. You get the NES thing, the NES thing. Oh. Oh, yeah. This episode is brought to you by Steins Gate. Yeah. Draw to you by Dr. Uh, Pepper. What else would it have been brought to you by? <laughs> Well, when, after Steins Gate went back in time and had us promote it, promote them by doing the entire podcast. Ah, okay. Brought to you by Stern. Don't investigate any of our activities. Don't worry about it. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> Sorry, you're gonna say it everybody. Um. So, uh, so my take on the the whole um, Luca's gender thing. Um, I mean, so ultimately, death of the author and and all that sort of thing means that there is no um, correct interpretation and. Um, it can really be. They even say it in the game. the The only sort of correct interpretation is Luca is Luca, like, and gender. Mm-hmm. They even say multiple times that gender doesn't matter. Ultimately, from my perspective, from what has been uh, read, I see Luca as trans, and um, she's actually one of the uh, only um, like characters that are sort of presented this ambiguous way um, in media that I know. She's only, like, one of two that I would actually say is definitively trans, as opposed to, like, some non-binary or just a feminine man or things like that. Um, so, it's it was quite interesting. But ultimately, I based that off of, you know, her. she genuinely wanted to be a girl with her, her timeline, uh, timeline change. Um, she didn't want to go back, and... The, um, the, I think the reasoning of, like, wanting to be with Rintaro, I think the, you know, the, I think that's not the entirety of it, but I also think that regardless of the reasoning, if it's a genuine wish, that that doesn't really matter. Um, so, it's like, I don't think, like, I don't know, just from my perspective, I don't know any cis guy that would, like, really want to transition just to be with a, a, another dude, but that's just my perspective. Maybe there's evidence of that out there. Um, but yeah, it's I I I I, I don't think that my uh, interpretation really has changed, um, and I, I realize that uh, there will still this this explanation will still convince no one. But you bring up a really good point, though, about like also like if there were a bunch of other like great trans characters out there, then maybe it would be like, oh, whatever, it's ambiguous. But there's definitely like this impulse to like grab onto it because it's like, oh, this one's good. This one's clear and makes sense. Yeah, I I, I was I was struggling to actually think of like any of the media that I can, you know, from from Japan that I've consumed. And I can only think of one where like it was sort of ambiguous and would and they they pretty much actually do just say that that character is trans uh, without saying it in exact words. I think because they didn't have the words at the time when that was written. Um. So, Luca is the close second. 
And there's like, just in literature in general, there's a lot of indicators. Like there's a lot of queer indicators. Like we've seen this time and time again. If you look back on 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 situations where people were unable, given the, you know, the context of the, of their their culture or or even the legal context of the time where they couldn't acknowledge it, and so there's always been this undercurrent of sort of putting out all these indicators to acknowledge something without saying it, and sometimes right. people have embraced those and like and talked about and like you know, put those into their 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 narratives. Sometimes without realizing it, even though when they're trying to communicate that. So I don't want to, like, put a narrative on anyone. But, like, if you just keep putting out the same signals, it is, like, a reader can take that. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, and, and interpret it because they've seen enough evidence. Especially if you want to, like, the evidences of it in trans, uh, you know, in literature of, of, of trans is, is not as, uh, is not going to be as, as widely embraced because this is something that, that I think a lot of modern day culture is still coming to terms with, but we've seen it for a long time, um, with queer literature. And it's difficult to write about too. So like a lot of people shy away from that. Um, I think there are, there's a lot of like pointers in that direction in this story uh all of which i cannot enumerate in the time that we have what are we at already in the recording oh yeah no way hour 20 yeah. yes so yeah and it's just like and it like you don't we, there's it's not a mathematical formula like we don't need to like keep yeah. getting in here with the, to put everything out here but but if, if you're willing to to understand what what's like you know a wider world you have to be open to understanding this you don't have to you don't have to agree with it but like think those things happen Ultimately, I think, like, what I, I... I'm not sure if the the writers intended this, but what I think um, any reader should get out of Luca's story is to just question, like, what gender means, in a way. And, you know, what, what answer you come out of that with Luca, whether, you know, a, a cis man or a trans woman or a, any, any other in-betweens, I... Any answer is valid. Like I said, Luca is Luca, um, but I I think really the goal for reading through this is to to make you think in a way. Yep, I think that's well said. And uh, we have been going a while, so is that about it? Unless we got more. Oh. So next time. Yeah. Send the email. Yeah. So next time, um, we're not going to get another ending next time. Um, but you will still get the choice whether to send the email or wait. And don't send it straight away. You will get another scene uh, that's pretty important. And I don't think it's even in the anime, that scene. So if you only know the anime, that will be probably new to you. That must be important if anime won't even touch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so don't send it. It's not another ending. You will send the email eventually, but don't don't send it the first time the game offers you to. Okay. All right. And then when do we stop? Uh, the end of the chapter. You don't. The end of the chapter. It's like yeah. sex. You just oh keep going God. forever and take water breaks. Just water breaks. Rest of your life, Steinsgate. That's the end of the episode. That's that's it. Elsai Congru. Elsai Congru. Elsai Congru. Elsex Congru.